This is the Samsung Galaxy A35 5G disassembly. If you're interested in seeing more videos like this, make sure you subscribe and click on the notification bell so you'll be notified once I upload a new video. Also, if you need any tools, there are links in the description. First, we'll need to remove the SIM tray. Looking at the SIM tray, we can see a rubber gasket around it. Now heat needs to be applied to the back plate using a hairdryer or a heat gun to loosen up the adhesive underneath, and then a pry tool can be used to pry the back plate off. I prefer to use a hairdryer since there's less of a chance of damaging any of the components inside by overheating them. Here's a look at the glass backplate. The camera lens covers can be replaced by applying heat and prying them off, so you don't need to take apart the foam to replace those. At this point, there are 18 Phillips screws which need to be removed. Looking at the top plastic cover, we can see some antenna lines drawn on it which are the light gray color lines, including the NFC antenna. On the other side, we can see an area of graphite film to help transfer heat. Now that we have access to the battery cable, we'll disconnect that first. Now we can proceed to disconnect the rest of the cables. The red and blue coaxial cable can be disconnected by just popping them off. Here's a look at the 13 megapixel front facing camera. There's a single Phillips screw which is holding down the main board. Looking at the main board, we see the 8MP ultra-wide lens, the 50MP primary, and the 5MP macro lens. The main camera is the only one with OIS or optical image stabilization. The camera connectors can be disconnected by just popping them off. There's a secondary microphone on the top corner, and the LED flash is located here. The SIM and memory card reader is located on the other side. Next to that is the ambient light sensor and the two other connectors for the cameras. There's also a graphite pad on the back shield to help transfer heat. Once the graphite pad has been peeled back, we can see a thermal pad on top of the processor as well as one on top of this chip. This flex cable connects the main board to the subboard as well as the screen cable. If you needed to replace the screen, you'd have to remove the back plate, the screws on the bottom plastic cover, and the cover itself, 
at which point you'd be able to disconnect the flex cable which connects the screen to the main board. You then pry the screen flex cable from the frame, heat up the front of the phone where the screen is to loosen up the adhesive underneath, pry the old screen off, apply new adhesive, reapply the new screen making sure you run the flex cable back through the opening in the midframe, and reassemble the phone. There's a single Phillips screw which is holding on the subboard. Looking at the subboard, we see the charger port located here, and next to that is the primary microphone. Here's a look at the other side. The vibrator motor is located here, which is held on with some adhesive, and the same goes for the fingerprint sensor and the bottom loudspeaker. To remove the battery, there's a pull pouch provided to help you pry it off. This is the 5000 milliamp hour battery. Once the battery adhesive pull pouch has been removed, we have a better look at the copper vapor chamber which runs underneath the battery as well as the motherboard. The flex cable for the volume key is located on this side. To remove that, you just gently peel it off from the frame and lift up and pull out the metal bracket. Here's a look at that. The physical buttons can be removed by pulling them out. The earpiece speaker is located on top, which is held down with some adhesive. So comparing the A35 to the A55, some of the differences we can see are the plastic border on the A35 compared to the A55, which has a metal border. The vibrator motor on the A35 is not a linear one like the A55. And the A35 uses the coaxial cables for the antenna connections from the subboard to the main board versus the A55 using a flex cable. As far as the vapor chamber goes, it looks to be the exact same size as the A55. For the repairability score on this phone, I give it an 8.5 out of 10. Now it's time to put the phone back together. Once everything's back in place, apply new adhesive and reapply the back plate. Flip over the phone, power it on, and you're done. I hope you enjoyed this video, and I'll see you in the next one.